All right, movement. Feel free to take your seat. I'll give you a moment to collect yourselves. <laughs> Feel free to take your seats, grab your Bibles, or turn in your phones and turn to 1 John chapter 4. It's way in the back of the New Testament, 1 John chapter 4. While you're getting there, if we haven't had the chance to meet yet, good morning. My name is Ellie Glass, and I get to serve here at Movement as the ministry resident. And I'm excited to learn with you this morning as we read from the Word of God. 1 John chapter 4, feel free to read in your Bibles or follow along on the screen. Here we go. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God and God remains in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, I would love for us to think about love, specifically alert love. To remain in Christ and his love is to remain alert. To remain in Christ and his love is to remain alert. As we spend time in God's word this morning, thinking about love and thinking about how we can remain alert in love, my prayer for each one of us is that we would walk away with a fresh understanding of God's love for us and a fresh perspective of the obedient action, the obedient invitation that you and I have to stay alert in love. To start us off, what is love? If you are anything like me, you just responded in your head with the lyrics, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. If you are nothing like me and that did not go through your mind, that's okay. We move on. What is love? Love is something that is so common in today's world, and it is such a common concept. And I would hope to assume that each one of us knows at least what love is, whether it's a really sappy and deep emotional kind of love, or whether it's something simple and straightforward. We each have a list of loves in our hearts. We just took a moment and turned to the person next to us and shared a few things that we love, places, people, food, Hobbies, dreams, desires, careers, beliefs, traditions, viewpoints. We are people that love intensely, whether it's something really deep and emotional or whether it's something more straightforward. For example, when I think of love, I think of that feeling you experience when you're standing in line at Chipotle and you're about to order your burrito bowl and you give the nice Chipotle employee your order, and yes, you order queso and guac, even though they both charge extra, you don't care, because you are loading up that burrito bowl, and you walk out of that Chipotle with your burrito bowl in hand, you go home, you put on your favorite pajamas, you click on your favorite show, and you just say, oh, this is love. Can you tell that I do this a lot? Will I be there after church today? Yes, I will. We all love things so intensely, and this is good. We are people that love to love things. We are people that, maybe, would you agree with me, we sometimes love things a little too much. We sometimes can get a little aggressive, a little aggressive over the things that we love. We can get a little protective, defensive over the things that we love, a.k.a. no one comes between me and my Chipotle, a.k.a. no one gets in the way of this person that I love. No one gets in the way of this viewpoint that I have, this belief that I have. We are people that love intensely. And we love to receive this love, too. When it comes to love, whether it's serious and sappy or whether it's straightforward and simple, we love to love. The general definition of love is 
an intense feeling of deep affection, a great interest and pleasure in something. We love to love. And these verses in 1 John chapter 4, we see John taking a slightly different approach. We don't necessarily hear him talking about a love that is super straightforward and simple, but we also don't hear him really talking about a love that is in your face and aggressive. But instead, if you actually follow the original root of the word love that John is using, we find that he's using the Greek word agape. And agape means to love the undeserving despite disappointment and rejection. Okay, this is starting to get a little more serious now. This isn't just a sappy type of love or a simple, straightforward type of love. But agape love is to love the undeserving despite disappointment and rejection. Nelson's Bible Dictionary states that agape love expresses the essential nature of God. Love can be known only from the actions it prompts, as seen in God's love in the gift of his Son. Love found its perfect expression in the Lord Jesus. This agape love is so much more than an intense feeling of deep affection. This agape love that John is saying is essentially Jesus Christ. Okay, so now that we have a fresh understanding of the type of love that John is using, agape love, hopefully your Bibles are still open, let's read through this passage one more time with this fresh perspective of agape love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. Now that we've read this with a fresh perspective of agape love that John is using, can I be honest with you? There is so much in this passage. <laughs> there is so much that John is talking about here. And he's so funny because it's so powerful, yet he's so simple at the same time. And I think there's great reasoning for this. But as I've been sitting with this text for the past couple of months, I've been asking, Lord, what is, what is he saying? What can our faith family learn from this message of love? So as I've been praying, as I've been wrestling, I've come across three realities, three realities to help us remain alert in love. Now, this word alert is something I would love for us to keep in our pocket. To be alert is to be fully aware and attentive, to be wide awake. This passage gives us three realities to help us stay fully aware, fully attentive, and wide awake when it comes to this agape love. First, we must allow God to redefine his love for us. Unfortunately, you and I both have experienced times in our lives where this love has been poorly communicated. Unfortunately, we live in a world where we see this perfect, pure, agape love being poorly shown to us. We are in desperate need for God to come along and redefine his love for us. Let's look to the text and see how John describes love. Verse 7, love is from God. Verse 8, God is love. Here we go, verses 9 and 10. Get this. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Friends, here it is. It's right here. This agape love that God is telling us about is his son, Jesus. 
to see God's love clearly is to see Jesus clearly. When you go to the eye doctor, there's this tool that they use called a phoropter. And what a phoropter is, it's, say phoropter, somebody. Phoropter, there's your word of the day. And a phoropter is this machine-like tool that they bring before your face, and you look through it, and the eye doctor has you read the letters across the room. And so you read the letters across the room, and then he goes like this. Ready? He switches the lens, and he says, okay, try again. And he'll try and find the lens that works perfectly for you so you can most clearly read those letters. Can I tell you something? We are in desperate need for God to become our eye doctor. We really need God to come along and change those foggy lenses from our phoropter. And you want to know what's so cool about this? I love, I'm so thankful that as he does this, he shows us a clear image of Christ. And we need this because you and I both know that we are looking through foggy lenses. There are foggy lenses out there. And unfortunately, we've experienced these foggy lenses. Sometimes we've been the ones to place those foggy lenses in others' lives, in our lives. We are in desperate need for God to come along and to change out our lens and to show us Jesus. And I love how he says in verse 10 that this is not of our own doing. This is not of our own doing. This love was from God, and it is shown through his son, Jesus. Thomas Goodwin summed it up really well for us when he says, Christ is love covered over in flesh. When we say that Christ came down and rescued me, we are saying love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. Christ is love covered over in flesh. To redefine God's love is to see Jesus clearly. And we have to, as beautiful as this is, it's also really tough because we have to go through an assessment process with ourselves. And we have to be willing to go through those foggy lenses and say, where in my life has love been poorly communicated? Where in my life has love been poorly shown? And we have to be willing to hand those over to Christ. And he says in return, my son Jesus redeems that. My son Jesus redeems that poorly communicated way you've been shown love. My son Jesus redeems that. Let me show you a clear image of Christ. And you know what's funny about the eye doctor? They always call you back. Even when I always have to order new contacts, even when my prescription is fine, but they say, no, come in for a new exam. We need, we constantly need the Lord to be switching out these foggy lenses. We constantly need him to be calling us back to the eye doctor. And as he does this, as he's showing us a clear image of Christ, we have the really awesome opportunity to respond to this love. And this is the second reality that John shows us. As he continues to redefine his agape love for us, as we center this agape love in the truth that God sent his one and only son for us, we read in the text that it was for quite a specific purpose. Verse 9 says this, God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. What does that mean? What does it mean that we would live through him? Well, John is pretty straightforward when he comes to how exactly we are to live through Christ, by loving others. Here's what he says right away in verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. As we respond to God's love, we are simply doing what's most natural in our born-again selves. We are simply doing what is most natural as we are born again in Christ, as this love, this perfect, pure, agape love has taken root in our hearts. And these are not light words that John is throwing around, because notice what he says in verse 8. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love, period. That's what he says. These are not light words. Friends, I want to know God. I want to know that this pure, perfect, agape love that has taken root in my heart. And this is the crazy part. John is reminding us time and time again that this love that is rooted in our hearts, when we respond to that, it's not our love that we are extending out. Ellie, me, I don't have to create some sort of love and then send it off. Here's a little bit of Ellie's love. No, I am responding with the love that has taken root in my heart. Because without that, we can't love properly. Without that love rooted in our hearts, we cannot respond with that love. To respond in love is to be alert, ready, and willing to love others with the love of Christ. I was in Michigan a couple weeks ago, 
and I was able to attend a church service on a Sunday morning. And after the pastor had delivered his sermon, he invited the prayer team up and he told the congregation, during this last song, if you would like to receive prayer, we would love to pray for you. And so it was pretty cool because I was towards the back, so I slowly started to see people going up to the front for prayer. And all of a sudden, I saw this huddle of people in the front praying over someone. There was multiple people praying in this little huddle, praying over this person. And the person next to me, he must have seen it too, because all of a sudden, he booked it to the front, and he instantly joined that huddle of prayer. Friends, to respond in love is actually to respond in love. To respond in love is to notice, to drop everything we're doing, and to join that person in prayer and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And may we remember that this is not our own love that we are extending. This is not Ellie's version of love that I have to create every single day and extend. But this is the perfect, pure, agape love that has taken root in our hearts that allows us to respond. To respond in love is to be alert, ready, and willing to love others with the love of Christ. So now we've reached a point. We've allowed God to redefine his love for us, right? This pure, perfect, agape love. And then we are inclined to respond with that same love. And now John shows us that this is only possible when we remain in Christ and his love. Let's read what he says in verse 12. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. And there's a couple of verses we'll circle back to in a minute, but check out verse 16. John wants us to know that this remaining is meant to be mutual. Here's what he says. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. Friends, this is a love that longs to be mutual. As Christ extends his perfect, pure, agape love, and as it's taking root in our hearts, we have the opportunity to respond with that love, and that allows us to remain in Christ, and it also allows Christ to remain in us. This is a beautiful mutual remaining. Nikki is a member of our church family. She's serving in the nursery right now. But if you have gotten to know Nikki at all, or if you've had a conversation with her recently, you know that Nikki loves to garden. Her girls can confirm that. <laughs> and she loves to garden. And I love it when she sends me pictures of her garden. Look what's growing. Literally, I was over at her house a couple weeks ago, and we were eating baked potatoes. She literally goes out to her garden, gets some fresh chives, comes back and chops fresh chives on my baked potato. It was amazing. She loves to garden. But she knows that in order to do that, in order to chop up fresh chives on a baked potato, there has to be a remaining process that happens. This seed has to remain in the soil, has to remain around an environment that's, that's supplying its nutrients, healthy soil, fresh water, sunlight. There needs to be a remaining process. And the cool thing is, it's a mutual process. Because as that seed is growing, Nikki's able to say, go, buddy, go. And she's able to allow to see this seed growing into the produce that it is to become. There's a beautiful remaining process. And this is meant to be mutual. In order to love others to the fullest extent that Christ continues to love us, we have to remain in Christ surrounded by an environment that is supplying the nutrients that we need. We talk a lot about here, we say this a lot, that we have an invitation to be found in Christ, to be home in Christ. When I think of remaining in Christ, I think of being home in Christ. When I think of remaining in Christ, I think of communing with Christ. I think of communing with each one of you. When I think of remaining in Christ, I think of surrounding myself daily with, this, with the nutrients that I need to remain in Christ. Daily consumption of his word, communing with him, communing with others, simply gazing upon him as we return home to him, as we remain in him and his perfect, pure, agape love. And it's so cool because we ask the question, how do we know if we're remaining? Okay, Lord, I'm doing all the right things. I'm surrounding myself with the healthy nutrients that I need, but how do I know if I'm remaining? Well, John tells us right away in verse 13, this is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, 
And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. To remain is simply to return to the Holy Spirit that is dwelling within us. And you know how I said earlier how we are people that love intensely? I think sometimes, for me at least, there has to be some sort of logical reasoning. There has to be some sort of intense reasoning as to why I love or to how, how. There has to be a checklist. There has to be some sort of effort that I have to put in to love correctly, to remain in Christ. But all that John is saying is to return home to the Holy Spirit that's dwelling within you. Friends, this is so beautiful. How amazing is it that we can return home to the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, that his mercies are new every single day. This pure, perfect, agape love doesn't go away. It doesn't fade. We simply get the honor, the blessing of an opportunity to return home to that agape love that has taken root in our hearts. To remain in Christ is to bring our hearts back home to him and to live our lives as a response to his agape love that is taking root in our hearts. So three realities. We've allowed God to redefine his love for us. We have the chance to respond to that love with that same love. And we also get to remain in Christ as he remains in us. So what happens when there's a kink in the system? What happens when maybe one of these areas isn't receiving all the nutrients it's supposed to? Well, do you remember that word that I told you to put in your back pocket earlier, alert? To be alert is to be fully aware and attentive, to be wide awake. But as I looked more into this word, I found that it is to be fully aware and attentive, to be wide awake toward danger, to be vigilant, to be keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. To be alert is to be fully aware of the enemy. Friends, we recite the Great Commandment every single weekend, and we, we must realize that this commandment is truly the great commandment, that Jesus has commanded us to love one another. We have to know that this is the greatest target that the enemy is trying to attack. I was having a conversation with Holly a couple months ago, and we were talking on the phone, and we were talking about how weird. There were times in our lives that we, were just, we could see the enemy trying to divide. And I remember we were there really wasn't anyone to blame. There really wasn't anyone at fault, but her and I both, we said, the opposite of love is division. We could see the enemy trying to divide, trying to stir up relationships, trying to cause a mess. And I remember Holly, she said to me, stay alert. Keep your eyes open. Be watchful. First Peter 5, 8 says this. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. As real, as perfect, as pure this agape love is that has taken root in our hearts, it's also the greatest attack that the enemy is trying to go after. And we have to, we have, I, I also want to say that I don't mean for this to scare us either. <laughs> to be alert isn't to be scared. To be alert isn't to be the person on night watch with their eyes glued back and really jumpy and cautious. No, to be alert is to trust in that agape love because thanks be to God, is anyone with me, that hallelujah, that this isn't the end of the story, that the enemy is out to get us. Amen? Amen. I'm so thankful that this isn't the end of the story, that this perfect, pure agape love that John is talking about is everlasting. And we have the awesome opportunity to daily pick up the armor of God with the shield of faith, that defends the flaming darts from the evil one with the sword of the spirit, with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, we have the awesome opportunity to allow, to rely on that Holy Spirit residing within us. And we don't have to be scared. I hope to be alert, I hope that doesn't come across as scared because actually to be alert is to trust in the love that has taken root in our hearts. I am, I'm encouraged this morning I'm encouraged that we are able to remain in Christ and that he is able to remain in us. I think that sometimes, I'm 22, I've only been alive for 22 years. A lot of you are older than me and have experienced longer paths of life with the Lord. But for my 22 years, I'm so thankful that 
this remaining in Christ constantly is growing. As we remain in Christ, we are constantly able to see the love of God grow in ways that are literally insane, that we can't put words to. I, the end of this month will mark one year since I moved here. Oh, you guys, oh. <laughs> July 30th will mark one year since I moved here. And friends, I am so blessed to stand before you and say that I have seen a faith family stay alert in love. As someone who moved here, not knowing anyone, not knowing where I was going, I had to use my phone to get places. And friends, I'm so thankful, I'm so blessed to be a part of a faith family that responds in love, that's invited me over for dinners, that's had conversations with me over coffee, that will laugh with me and play endless games of bananagrams with me. I'm so thankful that this remaining process is something that we're able to enjoy, right? We're not supposed to be scared. This being alert isn't supposed to be a scary thing, but to be alert is to trust in the agape love that has taken roots in our heart because we constantly have to remind ourselves that we are the undeserving. This undeserving that he's talking about, that's us. And how beautiful it is that we can wake up every day and say, Lord, I center my heart in your perfect agape love, that God sent his one and only son to this earth for me to be the atoning sacrifice so that I can wake up every day and turn myself to that love that has taken root in my heart. I'm so thankful that this is a love that is meant to be enjoyed. A few months ago, we filled out these prayer cards and on the back side, there's three spots in which that we've been able to ask one another how we can pray for you. And the last box here says, how can we pray for your ministry? And there was one day I was here at HQ, I was working, and I saw the box of prayer cards sitting there. And so I was able to spend some time reading through each one and praying through each one. And I came across one, and in that little box on the bottom, how can we pray for you and your ministry? The person had simply wrote, stay alert for opportunities. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That was so amazing. I'm still, I'm still speechless about it. I'm not sure what was going through their mind when they wrote that. I'm not sure if there was more to the story. But they had simply written, Lord, would you help me stay alert for opportunities? Friends, I'm so thankful that we are surrounded by a faith family that is praying to stay alert for opportunities, to stay alert for opportunities to love, to stay trusting and the love that has taken root in our hearts, and that we get to enjoy this as we're remaining in Christ, as we allow him to redefine his love for us, as we respond to that love with that love, we get to see that happening around us too. And that is the coolest thing. Can I just tell you, that is the coolest thing, and I'm so thankful to be surrounded by a faith family that stays alert for opportunities. May this be our prayer. It's not always easy. It's really, it's not always easy, and it's hard it's hard to pray this. It's hard when we're going through those seasons of dryness, when we're going through the seasons where we wish we were the ones receiving the love instead of extending the love. This is hard. But I'm so thankful that we simply have the invitation to return home to Christ, to return home to the Holy Spirit that is dwelling within us. And may we remind ourselves that this is not our love that we are extending. This is not our love that we are extending. This is the pure, perfect, agape love given to us from God through his son, Jesus. I'm so thankful for that. I would love, I am surprised that I actually ended with enough time. Um, I would love if we could split up into prayer groups and let's pray for this. Let's pray for one another that we would stay alert for opportunities. And so in just a minute, we'll transition but also, if, you, if there's one of these areas that you know your heart is struggling with, if you need God to come in and redefine his love for you, if you need him to switch through those lenses in your phoropter, we would love to pray for that. Or if you're praying, Lord, how can I respond? How can I stay alert for opportunities? If you're looking, if you have something coming up and you know the Lord is prompting you to respond with love in a certain way, we would love to pray for that. But also, if you're praying, asking God, what does it look like to remain in Christ? What does it look like to remain in his perfect, pure, agape love? We would love to pray for that as well. And so, 
if you're able to, it's 1110, so technically you are free to go. <laughs> but if you would stand with me, I would love to pray. And as we transition into prayer groups, let's pray. Lord, we praise you for your love that has been shown to us through Jesus. May we never forget the power of the gospel. May we never forget the beautiful simplicity of the gospel. Lord, I'm so thankful that you have created us to be people that love intensely, that we get to love you with our whole heart, with our whole mind, with our, with our whole soul, with our whole strength, Lord. I'm so thankful that we simply get to return to you the love that you have shown to us. God, would you show us what it looks like to respond to this? As we stay alert, as we stay with eyes open, fully awake and fully attentive to anything the enemy is trying to throw at us, would you simply remind us that to remain in you, you give us a new vision. As we remain, as we return to this perfect, pure, agape love that has taken root in us, you give us a new vision that we're able to see things coming. Not only are we able to sense or to see that you show us what isn't your love, but you're also opening our eyes to say, yes, this is the love of Jesus working in us. This is the love of Jesus working in and through the faith family that surrounds us. God, I thank you that we can stand together today and that this is a constant prayer. As we pray over one another, would you allow our hearts to soften? Would you allow our hearts to be open and to receive this prayer of, Lord, we need your love. We need your love to see Jesus clearly. We need the message of Jesus to see him clearly. God, we love you, and we extend this same love to you, Lord. We, we praise you for this message in 1 John chapter 4. May we constantly learn from your word. May we constantly learn from the love that you have shown us. We love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.